Hello, this is Mike Game from Scratch, and today we're going to be taking a look at a library called Raylib. Uh, now, if you've been following this channel for some time, you probably know I'm not a huge fan of starting with C++. I've got nothing against the language C++. I just think it's not the greatest beginner's choice. And there's a number of reasons behind that. In fact, I've actually done a video on exactly that topic. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more, I've actually put, uh, when I started my Lua program, um, or my Lua tutorial series, I did a video explaining why I don't think C++ is the greatest starting choice. And a lot of it actually has nothing to do with the language itself, although there are a few reasons there, and almost everything to do with the tool chain. Now, C++ itself is built on a very antiquated build system, and it shows. So getting up and started with C++ is a gigantic pain in the ass. And then going one step further is trying to link in your first library, such as uh, SFML or SDL. Uh, so if you want to actually, you know, do games, if you want to extend beyond the, you know, built-in C++ libraries, you're, you're into another world of hurt there when you have to uh, deal with the library systems, the linker, etc. And that's sort of one of my big gripes there. Now the cool thing is there's this library out there called Raylib, which is what we were looking at today. Uh, completely free, uh, open source, hosted on GitHub. And it is focused on using C++, technically C actually, uh, for beginning to learn programming. And there's a lot of people out there that want to learn how to program using C or C++. And I highly recommend Raylib for this, for exactly that reason. Now it's a very, um, Focus language, sorry, focus library. It's all about um, you know creating games. It's these various pieces that all fit together. I will bring up the graphic. What's the graphic here? There we go. So you can see all the pieces that go together. So you've got um, these different core library parts or modules as part of the library. So there's the core textures, text shapes, models, shaders, audio, math, OpenAL, OpenGL is what it's built over top of, etc. And the cool thing about this library is it's got some pretty extensive support. So you see here, it's written in plain old C. It uses the C-sharp style or Microsoft's um, naming conventions for variables. So if you're moving to an X and A down the road, you're gonna be very familiar with like, the way that things are typed out. Um, it's built over top of OpenGL, so it is hardware accelerated, but it also uses its own abstraction layer, which allows it to be uh, cross-platform. And cross-platform is actually quite impressively cross-platform because it supports Android, Raspberry Pi, HTML5, Oculus Rift uh, was just added as well. And on top of that, you've got the ability to load 3D models, um, handle almost every single kind of texture you want or image format you want. Uh, support for shaders are in there, audio supports in there, and as you saw, VR support was just added. Uh, in fact, they just released 1.5. So this came out a couple of days ago. Um, I didn't do a news point on it because I haven't actually looked into Raylib yet. So this is actually one of those ones I'm going to keep an eye on. Um, this added the you know the VR support um, and a bunch of other things. You can see the whole list right here, and I will link these down below. So if you want to read more details, uh, definitely out there. But if you were looking to start learning to program using C or C++, this is my recommendation. It is actually, of all of the libraries I've seen, it is the easiest one to get up and going, and I will explain exactly why. Because when you go ahead to the Raylib webpage and you do the Windows, grab their, um, download the Raylib Windows installer option, uh, that installer actually will install this folder. So this Raylib folder, and it's a pre-configured installation of Raylib uh, that includes MinW, uh, uh, MinGW, uh, which is uh, a minimal GNU uh, C++ compiler chain for Windows. That's what it actually stands for, Min or minimum, G for GNU, W for Windows is why it's called uh, MinW. Uh, it also comes with Notepad++ pre-configured to work with it. And this is a huge deal. Notepad++ is a, a text editor. Now, of course, you can set this whole library up on your own. So if you're a more experienced programmer, you want to use Visual Studio, go ahead, but you're going to have to go through the learning curve. But if you aren't, that's why this guy shines. All you have to do is come into the install and load up Notepad++ and you're off to the races. Now, one of the things I don't like with this installer is it gave me no option of where to put it. And I hate things installing into my C colon directory. So that's my only real major beef for it. And it's a very minor beef to be honest, but I wish the installer allowed us to pick the path. And I know it's gonna break some of his scripts and the, some of the stuff he's done to make it so that it works automatically. I'm assuming he assumed uh, the path location, etc., for a few of these scripts, but I really wish he would make that configurable because I hate things being installed off my C root. Uh, but anyways, it installs um, a version of Notepad++. So if you never used it, Notepad++ is a very nice free text editor for coding. Um, it's basically exactly what it says, Notepad, 
plus more. And it, it works very well. This actually used to be one of my go-to text editors. Uh, it was more recently supplanted in my role by Sublime Text, which in turn has been supplanted by Visual Studio Code. Uh, but Notepad++ is a very good choice for um, a text editor for coding. And as you can see here, here is an example. Actually, I got this is the one that will open up when you first start up. Um, and you can see it's a self-contained C file, uh, very straightforward code. Uh, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of details of how the code works, but you can see here, uh, it's a very clean approach. If you've done any work with um, C++ based game libraries, this is gonna look quite familiar to you. So they've implemented the game loop for you. It's all documented for where you would start putting your code. And this is a nice setup for, um, you know, getting in there and experimenting. So right off the hop, you've got working program. So basically this is gonna um, clear the background in white. So here's your main game loop right here and ends here. Uh, so you've got your begin drawing and end drawing, which is an abstraction over top. This is exactly how uh, OpenGL works. So this is a layer over top of it, quite obvious. So um, you've got here, you clear your background and you draw your text. So this is gonna happen every single frame. And beyond that, you've got some simple initialization. So you're setting the resolution uh, and the window title, and here you're closing down the window. And that's it, that is your entire program in code, very easy and nice to use. Now the nice thing here though is, I did not have to install Visual Studio. I do not have to um, set up any lib files. I don't have to set up any include paths. I don't have to do anything. I come in here, I open up a .c file, and I hit F6. F6 brings up the execute command with this pre-configured script to bring in and do all of those things for us. So basically, it is going to run the version of MingW that it already installed. And I just click OK, it goes ahead and runs, and ta-da, you just created your first program successfully using Raylib. And this is why I recommend it. This was really elegantly done. The code is very straightforward, very easy to use, and it's that simple to get up and going. So um, now if we want to do something a little bit different, let's, let's add some uh, functionality here. I'm not extremely familiar with this library, so I might uh, mangle this up a little bit, but let's actually load a texture. Now you'll, load, you'll notice here that file that it's loading up is actually in Raylib examples, and it is uh, core underscore basic underscore window. So that is the one that's going to open up when you first start. So we're going to come in here and say core underscore basic underscore window is right there. So that's what it does. It loads up and then it looks for resources in this folder called resources. And you'll see here we've got, say, a picture of parrots.png. There's a number of uh, examples and we'll look at those in a second. So these are resources from the other examples. But I just want to go ahead and show you how you go about, say, loading a texture on screen now. Um, and so we've got parrots.png in the folder resources. So now I'm just going to come up here and go... So before our game loop, but after our initialization, we're going to create a texture 2D. Now here's another thing I like. It's pre-configured to automatically have IntelliSense support or you know code suggestions uh, in the editor, which are huge when you're just starting out. So texture 2D, actually they're huge all along. Um, so it's a really nice thing to have. Now let's go load texture, and you'll see here we're getting suggestions for it as well. And we open it up, and you'll see we're getting um, you know the the signature of our actual file. And in this case, we want to go resources slash parrot.png and when we're done here before we shut down we call unload texture very straightforward uh, pass in our texture and done now here in the middle instead of draw text we're going to now instead draw our texture so texture uh, so our texture zero zero and white So that, that last parameter, by the way. So what we've got here basically is we're saying draw a texture and then we pass in the name of the texture or the, the, the reference to the texture we're actually drawing, uh, the location to draw it at, so zero and zero, and then finally uh, the tint color, which I wish this was an optional parameter. This seems kind of sloppy to be honest that I have to specify a white tint or no tint, uh, but you know, very small quibble once again. So there we've gone, gone ahead and changed our code. Let's go ahead and run it. So hit F6 and then OK. And we must have got an error there because it ran our previous. Let me check to see if we did something wrong. F6. Compile and execute. Oh, I didn't save. All right, save our code. Uh, so there's one of those key things. I'm so used to the build process automatically saving and running, uh, so it doesn't. So let's save it and now compile. And 
yeah, I've definitely done something wrong here. Probably my file path is incorrect. So resource is parrot. Resources parrots. It's always something like that. All right, let's go ahead and get rid of that. And now let's run it. And there you go. Well, that is how easy it is to get an image up and drawn on screen. And we're only really just touching on the functionality. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail. Um, it is beginner focused. So it's one of those things you should just kind of jump in and experiment with yourself. But what I love that Raylib has done here is first off, they have made their code very clean, very intuitive, very straightforward. And the nice thing is if you walk away from this code in this format and then you move to something like SFML or SDL or um, even uh, XNA, et cetera. A lot of the other lower level code focused game engines you've got out there, you're gonna be immediately comfortable. They, they all kind of take a somewhat similar approach. So it isn't hiding things from you. You're still doing everything. You're, you're still in charge of uh, you know the entire life cycle of this texture, uh, et cetera. You still have to handle all that. There is still a game loop that you have to implement yourself, but it's made it very, very simple for you. Now, where the strengths and weaknesses of Raylib can kick in next, though, is when it comes to documentation. The documentation is, yeah. Um, on the one hand, we've got great documentation for getting up and going. Uh, excellent documentation. In fact, let me just bring it up. Uh, where are you, Wiki? All right. I was pretty sure I had it open already, but Wiki, not there. Oh no, this is the wiki. Okay, now where is the documentation? Here we go. So get in here into the wiki, and you see over here we've got uh, documentation for things like uh, compiling for your various different supported platforms. Uh, the default path, external dependencies, uh, a bit about the wrongly spelled architecture, um, etc. So this kind of stuff is well documented. If you want to build it on Windows, for example, here is the instructions for doing a, a command line compilation. Okay, so there we've got good documentation for the getting up and going. As you saw from what I've done already, it is super fast and easy to get this thing up and running, which is again, why to a beginner, it's great. This is why I loved XNA back in the day because it came with the compiler, the editor, the library, everything all kind of configured and you just ran with it. So this is the closest I've seen in the C++ world. Now where the documentation is missing, is the reference material. And this is kind of a double-edged sword, to be honest, because the reference material, I like to see a, a full class style, um, you know, function by function. Here are the parameters. Here's what all those parameters do. Here's the return type. I like to see that kind of reference information. And we don't have that. In fact, what we have is this. And this is actually kind of cool because it shows you how easy, in a way, it is to use uh, Raylib. But at the same time, I would like more detail here. And this is the cheat sheet. This is really all you need to know to know Raylib. And so you want to draw a line, you come down here and draw, oh, okay. Now it'd be nice to see, you know, again, a little bit more documentation. Basically, all you've got to go on is the comment that goes with each. But at the same time, this is really almost, this cheat sheet is all you need to know to get up and going with Raylib. You could create, if you've got basic programming abilities, you can be up and running in Raylib in the same day and creating some pretty impressive stuff. Um, so this is your primary documentation for working with it. Um, you know, they're where I would like to see it get built up is here I can load a sound. Well, what are sounds? Can I, can I support? Um, an AU or AIFF or MP3 or OGT or that's the kind of documentation this guy does need. But for the most part, this reference is enough to get you up and going. And if it isn't, and here's where you'll really start um, to learn Raylib on your own, is you'll be jumping into the examples. And the examples that are available here on the website, they actually run in the browser. Uh, one of the, again, the cool things about this library is it actually compiles down to HTML5 if you want. But so you can see here, you know, we've got tons of different, so if you want to get into sprite sheets, uh, for example, click up here and you can see there is the code, or there, sorry, there is the running version, and we'll scroll down a bit, and there is the code. And again, it's very clean, very straightforward, very simple to understand code, and it's very consistent with a lot of other game engines. So everything you need to learn it really is there. The examples are all there. They're shiningly great. And if we go back to our install, you'll notice back here in Raylib, if we go into examples, you'll see them all there. 
So there you go. Like if we wanted to run that particular example we just did, it is here. If you want to run any of the other examples, you can. And in fact, to actually get up and going in an example, there's no projects. There's no you know extra work to go through. In fact, we just come in here. We go file, open, and we pick the example we want to do. So let's go with say um, models object loading. All right. So it is now loaded up. There's the code for it. Go ahead and hit F6. It runs that code and there it is. So that is how easy it is to switch between the examples. There's, so there's no complex projects here. It is literally just open up a C file and go ahead and run it. And there's where Raylib shined for me. It's made the build process almost transparent to you. Now, at the same time, it is hiding it from you, which is something that you should do as a learner. You know, down the road, you're going to have to learn this crap. You Down the road, you're gonna run into, you know, I wanna link in another library. I want to use, I don't know, this audio library instead or this physics library or whatever. Then you're going to have to figure out what it's doing for you behind the scenes. But at least you can make that decision to learn about this crap later on. And that is the key to learning anything. You should be able to focus on the task at hand. And this is the kind of library where you can come in and learn C's syntax as you go. Now I should point that out again. This is technically a C library and C++ is a superset of C. So the one is the other, but you're not getting into things like classes. Uh, you're, you don't implement something called RAII or uh, resource acquisition is initialization, which is kind of like the standard of how memory allocation is done in C++ these days. So C++ isms aren't in here. You're technically working in C, but that skill is like 95% transferable over to C++. So I guess I should put the small cavity in there that this technically is a C library. Now the cool thing about a C library is it's also very easy to put bindings or make it work with other languages. So if you want to use this guy with Java, with um, Python, with Lua, with whatever, you could create bindings for it very, very simply, even possibly automatically using certain tools. So that's kind of one of the big upsides of being C-based. Uh, but again, I guess I should point that out. So there is a huge wealth of examples in here that you can jump in and learn. So there isn't a huge bit of reference material. There's really just that cheat sheet, but the library is straightforward enough, well organized enough, and has enough examples. You will never be struggling to learn it. I highly doubt you will, except for, of course, kind of getting the basics of game programming down, which I kind of wish there was a little bit more material on that level. So for example, you just started game programming yesterday. You got no idea what a texture is. You got no idea. So we've got some you know assumptions here on this cheat sheet, like. Um, not that many, uh, but mm, you know, poly, a polyline, um, draw texture. What's the difference between a texture and an image? And really, by the way, the, the only difference really there is where they are loaded in memory and which one's faster or slower. But you need some explanation for that kind of stuff. So that's really the only thing missing here. And that's that's a pretty pretty minor. Uh, quibble, I think, in the end. This is actually, a, it's a game library that really kind of impressed me for um, for learners. And I don't know long run if I would create a, a full game out of this guy. I, I really, and I don't mean it as a bash. I literally just don't know. I don't have enough experience on this guy. I can't tell you at the end of the day how good the performance is, if it's feasible, if there's enough functionality there. But there isn't a functionality in here to do pretty much anything you would in a comparable library such as uh, Pi Game or um, Lua or the, the, that kind of thing. And to be honest, if you're just starting out, performance should be the least of your concerns. So I'm not that concerned about it anyways. And the examples I have run so far have all been, you know, 60 frames per second, all limited by, you know, um, my code basically saying limit this to 60 frames per second. Uh, the final thing I'm going to touch on here before I move away is there are also pre-made games. So you've got an implementation of Arkanoid, Asteroids, uh, not sure, uh, probably Flappy Birds, uh, gorillas, Missile Commander, Pong, Snake, Space Invaders, and Tetris. And these, this is almost a who's who list of games I recommend that people actually go ahead and make. So that is a very, very good selection of starter games that you should go through as an exercise. All right, so that's it. I'm going to stop gushing now, but I would highly recommend if you want to, for some reason, use C or C++ as your first language for programming games, really do give Raylib a good consideration. It's probably the smoothest path I've ever seen. It is the most dummy proof kind of setup. If you can, you know, if you can find yourself liking Notepad++, you can get up and start coding immediately. And you can focus on coding instead of all that other crap. And that is the key to learning anything. 
Um, and when you just have code, C and C++ aren't so awful. They're tricky, but they aren't that bad. And it's this streamlined approach to it. And this nice comprehensive library, and you know, I'm giving probably too much credit to just the setup he's done and not enough to the fact that this is a very straightforward and easy to learn, easy to understand um, intuitive library, which is also key as something to work with and to learn with. And it's, it's surprisingly comprehensive. It supports a lot of stuff. Uh, so this is definitely one of those projects I do recommend you check out. It is available at um, www.raylib.com. Now, if you are interested or if you do get behind it, do consider uh, checking out over here under the Help Me. Uh, he has set up uh, Patreon and donation options there. So if this is a library you do want to get behind, it does help you out a lot. Do support the author. He's done a heck of a great job here. So just want to do my part in you know giving some exposure to this library. If you are looking to learn and it's C and C++ or C or C++ that you want to start with, check this guy out. Now, if you're on another platform other than Windows, yeah, you're not really the target audience here. So this is, again, I suppose you throw that one as a caveat as well. But the tool chain, all that pre-configured stuff, all of those things, and possibly even the library itself, it's very Windows focused for now. So if you're on one of those platforms, yeah, you're kind of probably better looking elsewhere. Um, but if you're looking to learn and you want it to be C or C++ and you're on Windows, do check out RedLib great little library. All right, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you found that useful. And if you did, please do click like down below. And if this is the kind of stuff you're into, there is tons of it on this channel. We do reviews, we do we look at game engines, we do tutorials, and we try to introduce cool libraries like what you just saw today. So if that sounds uh, interesting to you, please let me know. Thank you. Bye.